My name is Cornelia Dimitrova and I'm currently working on a project about uh, artificial reef making that can also be used for mussel farming. Our main concern was the eutrophication and that was our marine ecologist he started years ago trying to look for solutions and how he can help the environment. But the main thing is to try to help the environment help itself and not to enforce anything that is against its nature. So what, we, what he did and what we're now also doing is um, he analyzed the food chain and the ecosystem and each player has its own role and that's very important because basically that provides the balance, the equilibrium between them. So once you have eutrophication, which means overfeeding with nutrients and other feeding pollutants, from agriculture mainly, um, you have certain species that bloom, like the algae. They, they overpopulate the sea, and when there is no one to eat them, they die and gradually decay, and their decay deprives the water from oxygen, which then sets a almost irreversible process in motion, which harms most species in the marine habitat. Mussels are, are the next thing and they're a very big player on the next level of the food chain. So what is the problem? Where are these mussels? I mean, if they have the food, in theory they should also be able, you know, be appearing more and more. But they're, they're not and that's because they have nowhere to attach because that's a substrate is something which is very important for them to thrive. How it's located, where it's located, it has to be vertical with a good flow of water because if it's at the bottom where all these algae fall dead already, they also die and they're also at the bottom they're more vulnerable to their natural predators. And this is what we have here. The structure provides a substrate for mussels so they can grow there. And what happens is that that also creates a reef habitat and the reefs are essentially the kindergarten of the sea. This is where all the small, um, the young of all the animals thrive and are born and, and actually you know, make their first critical years. And uh, also it provides a hiding place and a breeding ground and it's just, it's, uh, it's oasis if you think about it, you know, as a, in terms of a desert. So what's also interesting is that these reefs can be, in terms of mussel farming, they can be produced, they can be installed anywhere and thus you can produce mussels anywhere. We're very concerned with the social, environmental and the economic aspects. So in terms of the environmental ones, we believe because the mussels are a species that populates almost everywhere, at least in all the temperate zones you can find them. And those are also the zones which are mostly populated. So thus, in terms of eutrophication, this could be a good method to handle it in those areas. In the areas which the water is not as contaminated and, and the, the mussels can be used for food production. This can also be a, an important source of nutrition for, for many people. I think the most important characteristic of our project is that we are taking what is usually seen as a problem, as a downside, as a negative effect, and 
it seems to be also inevitable, but it does not have to be a problem. What we're trying to work with is turning a problem into a resource, which apparently now we have eutrophication is one of our renewable resources, so how can we manage it in a better way? And, and through such farms we could do that. And it's this whole way of shifting the perspective of thinking about instead of focusing on, on how a problem is a problem, let, we need to rethink of how a problem can be a solution to another problem.